So you were talking earlier about the different hum. You want to explain that to your audience? Yeah, so I'm just listening to what the bees are telling me, basically. You know, right now they're telling me everything's okay, you know, because, you know, they're nice and they're the sound, you know, they're, they're, they're just kind of normal tone, pitch, and they're, and they're not... Uh, they're, they're not they're not starting to uh, make a lot of uh, higher pitch noise. So I find when I'm working a hive, the bees know when the queen's been pulled out. So when you're working the frames, within one or two, the bees will actually change their their noise, uh, the different pitch. They they stand differently, their body position. So you can tell when a hive is is queenless too, just by the amount of agitation on the frame and and the noise that they make. Yeah. So since I was going to go into the I don't know this hive as well. You know, you get to know your hives, basically. And every, every hive is different. So I know this one. This one has yet to sting me all year. It has not been agitated. I've been in the brood. It's just super calm. I don't know that nuke very well yet. So since I don't know that nuke very well yet, and as Tim said, I'm going to go into the, I'm going to be going into the brood chamber. That's when they'll start to get a little bit more defensive when you, when you start to break into brood. So or when you knock them. <laughs> Knocking them is not good. You know, they talk about movement around the hive being very purposeful, smooth movement, not jerky, not banging, stuff like that. Just then you heard them, right? I, I banged the box and you could hear the pitch of the bees go up. And they're still not back to baseline yet. They're still humming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be perfect. I'm going to have trouble. I'm going to, I'm going to have trouble uh, moving a frame a deep frame up into this medium box just because they're deep frames. So it's, I'm going to have a have trouble. It's not going to work, mate. That's, a, that's, a that's medium. the medium frame right there, mate. Yeah. So if you want to hold that up for the camera behind you because they can zoom in, you can see all the, uh, well, I can see from here the drone comb. There you go. Wow. So that the natural burr comb that they built on the bottom of the frame is actually slightly larger. So the queen is actually with a larger cell will actually lay a haploid drone. So an uh, unmated egg goes into that cell. So you get drones in there. Can you uh, hold on to the drone? So all I'm doing now to... is cutting the drone larvae off this frame. Arr, my surgical skills were good, but hold the pot too, huh? I never. So basically we have taken a deep frame and made it into a medium frame. I can't sing like Alicia can sing, so I'm gonna whistle. <laughs> and I got my first sting as soon as I started to whistle. Not good. Okay. Do you, do you normally whistle in the hive? <laughs> it's not a good idea, I don't think. No, because they actually communicate at uh, pitch at that, that level, George. I try not to whistle or hum when I'm working. My no, hives. it's I, it's funny that you say that because I whistled and then I got stung. There's the queen. So I did not I did not surgically. She's marked purple. Wow. See her? Yeah, she's really nice noticeable. And, nice and noticeable. She's kind. Of, she's kind of moving around purposely right there by my thumb. 